But I want to take us to the cross for a minute. And uh, I just want to remind us of our progression as believers. There comes a point in your life when you realize that you don't know God, that you don't have God. You may know about him. You may know of him, but you don't really know him. Jesus says in these crazy parables, he said, many people will stand before me at judgment day. Um, Let's just say this real quick. I'm going to stand before God one day. (laughs) No, say it like you really mean it. I mean, it's a... It's going to happen. I'm going to stand before God one day. And, and, and here's the deal. The Bible teaches us we'll stand alone. We'll stand without any uh, hidden activities that won't be exposed. Can I get an amen? I mean, you could get arrested for, for one thing, and, and good thing you got arrested for speeding because the cop didn't see you rob 7-Eleven. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could get away with some stuff here on earth. But we will stand before God in judgment one day. Um, And I want to spend my life preparing people to live before they die. That is Stacy and I's agenda, to prepare people to live before we die. Can I get an amen? And, And because there's a day coming that we'll stand before God. And we're not gonna be there cocky, saying, well, let me ask you a couple questions. We're not gonna stand there saying, well, you know, No, 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 we're going to be in awe going, oh, no, this came way too soon, way too fast. Uh Uh-oh, 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 am I ready? Can I get an amen? If you don't know Jesus, Jesus says this in his parables. Many people preached in my name. Many people cast out devils in my name. But when they stood before me in judgment, the problem was I didn't really know them. I didn't know them. Now, that word know means intimately like a husband would know his wife. Can I get an amen? In a marriage covenant situation. So the intimacy that Jesus wants with you is not religious. He does not want your church attendance. He does not want your money. He does not want you to check off your Sunday school card. He doesn't want you to get your baptism certificate. He's not going to go. You're not going to get into heaven and he's going to say, show me your documentation. Show me your church uh, uh, approval, show me your baptism, show me your, your tithing record. And he's not going to ask for any of those. He's just going to say, oh, wow, I know you. Or, oh, wow, I don't know you. Now, for us to think that God doesn't know us is kind of a crazy thought because God designed us. Can I get an amen? He knows us inside and out. Anybody remember that old country song, like, I knew her birth date, I knew her, her uh, uh, color of her hair and the color of her eyes. Stacy's already shaking her head because I'm butchering the lyrics. <laughs> Forget it. I don't even remember, but, but, but he said, I never knew her, you know? And so anyways, okay, forget it. That's a horrible example. Um, anybody remember Bon Jovi, you give love a bad name? Okay. Yeah, that's more my idea. Okay. Uh, but God is saying, do you really know me? So where we first meet God is at the cross of Jesus Christ. So we leave this cross illuminated at every service with with the communion cups underneath it because you've got to start at the cross. You got to start there. You got to kneel before the cross of Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, would you forgive me of my sin? Now your sin is internal. Can I get an amen? Your sin is your heart condition. Your sin is your mindset, your greed, your lust, your anger, your bitterness, your unforgiveness, your pride, your, all your junk that's on the inside of your heart. You may look sparkly and shiny on the outside, but the inside of us is ugly, dank, rank, gross, smelly. Can I get an amen? So we meet Jesus at the cross, and the blood of Jesus cleanses our blood. The problem with your blood is that your mom and daddy sinned and their mom and daddy sinned and their mom and daddy. We all come from the worst group of sinners ever thought of. Can I get amen? Why? Because our ancestors sinned all the way back to Adam and Eve is where our bloodline changed physically 
And sin entered and started to corrupt our bodies. Can I get an amen? Adam and Eve were created to live forever. I want you to remember that. If Adam and Eve had never eaten the fruit, they would still be alive today some 6,000 years later. Now, that's hard for us to fathom. It's hard for us to imagine. But they were created to live forever. Can I get an amen? That's why death is a a complexity to us because we're not designed to die. Come on, right? Now, we're gonna, but we're really created to live forever. So that's why the Bible talks about our eternal being. The blood of Jesus cleanses your sin, and that's why we believe that the blood of Jesus can also heal our bodies. Can I get an amen? We need a blood exchange. We need a transfusion. We need a DNA swap. Yes? The second progression, and I, I'm going to use the word progression because I don't want you to think that these are just steps where we're checking a box. But the next progression of your walk, when you get saved at the cross, the inside of you gets cleaned. Can I get an amen? The inside of you will no longer go to hell. The inside of you will live with Jesus forever. But like when Stacy and I first kissed and we fell in love... That's like meeting Jesus at the cross. I know it's a pale comparison, but I'm just trying to put it in. And so the next progression was this water baptism. The next progression was her and I standing at an altar and physically putting something on our hands and physically making a vow in front of in front of physical friends and family and in front of our God saying, Would you would you join us together? Can I get an amen? So our progression, if I just kissed her at Texaco and said, I love you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but hey, I'm never going to marry you, then you would say, ah, he's just full of it, right? So, so the next progression of our walk with Christ is water baptism. And water baptism is something that we make a choice as an adult or a person that can make our own decisions. God bless our mamas and daddies if we got baptized at infancy, but we've got to make our own choice. One day, Eric Daniel's going to have to make his own choice. Can I get an Amen. But when you get into the water, that water, you're physically going to come out saturated. You're physically going to come out engulfed and wet, and, and your whole body, your whole being is going to be, uh, go from dry to wet. Can I get an amen? But spiritually, you're washing away the dirt, the grime, the stain, the smell, the dirt, the, the B.O. of sin. You're physically burying your addiction. Your perversion, your shame, your greed, you're physically dying. Jesus says baptism is a death and then it is a birth at the same time. You're going to die with Christ but be risen to newness of life. And so the second progression, if you will, of our walk with Christ is water baptism. And there's power in the water. It is a picture. It is a a representation of an internal transformation, and we're going to externally share it with our families and friends. If if I had said to Stacy, hey, listen, I love you at Texaco, but hey, let's have a wedding, but I don't want anybody to know it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I mean, I really love you and all, but I don't want to, I'm not going to wear the ring. I'm not going to invite my friend. We're just going to go see a JP, and I'm not picking on that process. But but if I told her I'm not not going to really let anybody know it, I'm ashamed then she would probably, should, second guess and run. Are you, are you with me? Many people say, well, I mean, I don't want to get, get in the, the water in front of everybody. That, that would be embarrassing. I'm too old. I'm too big. I'm too short. I'm too whatever. They would, listen, Jesus says, if you'll publicly pronounce me in front of your friends, then I won't be ashamed of you in front of my friends. Now think about that. Think about that. When I walk into heaven, I want Jesus, I want him elbowing Michael and Gabriel saying, Cameron's here. I want it. I want my name over the loudspeaker. I don't want Jesus to go, oh, oh man. Oh, Cameron showed up, dude. <laughs> I, I don't, I, you know, right? So the second step to our walk is water baptism. There's power in the water because there was first power in the blood of Jesus. There's no power in the water. 
There's no power at an altar saying, oh, baby, would you marry me? Here's a ring. Here's my... There's no power there if I first didn't give my heart at the Texaco parking lot or wherever. There's much more romantic places than that. What was wrong with us? It could have been Mount Bunnell or something. I don't know. But are we together? So Jesus says, give me your heart. Now give me your life, the good, the bad, the ugly. And what I'll bring out would be holy. Can I get an amen? amen? The third progression is what happened on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, and that is spirit baptism. Many Christians take step one, they take step two, but they, er, they stop when it comes to being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse Uh, 26. John the Baptist was the forerunner. He was the, he was the, the lead runner. He was the path maker. He, he was the guy holding the machete, cutting down the trees. He was making a path for Jesus's ministry. Can I get an amen? John the Baptist, we get the word baptism from his name. John the Baptist was the baptizer. John the baptizer, he would baptize people in their repentance in the Jordan River. So if you came and repented and you showed that you really repented, he would then baptize you in the Jordan River. If you showed up like the Pharisees and you said, well, you know, I want to get baptized because everybody else, it's a cool thing and uh, my girlfriend did it or my mom and dad want me to, he would say, no, 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 show fruit worthy of repentance. Don't get baptized if you didn't really give your heart to Jesus because it's no big deal. You're just getting wet at that point, right? Right? So he says this, John the Baptist says this in 1 John verse 26. John answered and said, I baptize with water. Just say, man baptizes with water. But there stands one, Jesus, among you whom you do not know. If Jesus stood in this room, would you know him? That's a scary question. Did you know that when Jesus was walking the earth 2,000 years ago, Many God followers, today we would say Christians, churchgoers, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon ten thousands churchgoers, God followers, saw Jesus and did not recognize him. They saw Jesus heal, they saw him or heard him feed 5,000. They saw or heard he walked on water. They saw or heard he opened blind eyes, healed uh, uh, deaf ears, healed the cripple. He did these things. Thousands upon thousands saw him, but yet did not recognize him as God. Why? Because they did not meet God with their heart. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of churchgoers in America today if Jesus stood on stage, might not recognize him because they didn't really give him their heart at the cross. Are we together? Just wanted fire insurance, just wanted to go to heaven, just that was the right thing to do. The third progression, John says this, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he, Jesus, coming after me. He is preferred before me whose sandal straps I'm not even worthy to loose. And in Matthew chapter 3, he says, Jesus comes to baptize not with water, but with the Holy Spirit and fire. Just say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Like we mean it, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And fire. fire. The third progression in your walk with Christ is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. To say, Holy Spirit, I have been bought with the blood of Jesus, so if I died, I'm going to heaven. I have been washed of my sin. I've been cleansed. I've made a public profession of my faith. But now would you pour your spirit out on me like Niagara Falls, and I'm willing to go do and say and be anything and everything you want me to be. All the money in my bank account, Holy Spirit, you baptize it. All my job credentials, all of my athletic abilities, all of my 
trophies, all of my status and my fortune and fame, you baptize it with your spirit and you use it. Can I get an amen? amen? There's a real Holy Spirit baptism that the church is missing. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you start to walk like, talk like, and act like Jesus Christ. There's too many Christians that don't walk like, talk like, and act like because they don't allow the Spirit of God full access to them. Can I get an amen? amen. The fourth baptism, or the fourth step, is the baptism of fire. Say fire. fire. Now, this is not hell. This is holy fire. So just say holy fire. Holy fire. When the holiness of God starts to settle on you and burn you, all the evil and wickedness inside of you will not withstand the fire. Are we together? Amen. Holy fire means that God starts to sanctify your tongue like Isaiah. Isaiah says, O oh Lord, I am a man of unclean speech and I live amongst a people of unclean speech. He wasn't just talking about cuss words. He's talking about speech that doesn't glorify God. And God says, he gives an angel some tongs and takes a coal and comes and touches his tongue and burns out the iniquity and the perversion of his being. Can I get an amen? amen? The fourth progression in your walk with Christ is the progression of holy fire. So when you get saved, you don't just quit cussing, you don't just quit lusting, you don't just quit being greedy. God starts to burn that language out of your vocabulary Burn that greed out of your heart. Burn that unforgiveness out of your, your soul. He starts to change you with holy fire. Far too many of us resist the fire. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Remember those three Hebrew boys? And they wouldn't bow, but they knew if they did bow that they would be thrown in the fiery furnace. They chose the fire. Other good Hebrew boys and girls right next to them says, oh no, I don't want the fire. I'll just bow. I'll just bow. As a believer, you can choose to go into the fire or you can choose to stay out of it. Can I get an amen? The fire of holiness will consume all the stuff that's unholy and God will change your life for it. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen? 